Section 15. Rigging. The references for this section. EM 385, TAC 1, TAC 1, Section 15. 29 CFR 1926.251. And the Uniform Facilities Guide Specification 01-3526. Wire rope construction. Wire rope is comprised of an inner core, either fiber or wire, wrapped by a predetermined number of strands that contain a predetermined number of wires in each strand. For example, 3 quarter inch 6 by 19 IWRC is a 3 quarter inch diameter wire rope comprised of 6 strands made up of 19 wires per strand surrounding an independent wire rope core. Inspection and use. Rigging equipment shall be inspected as specified by the manufacturer by a competent person before use on each shift and as necessary during its use to ensure that it is safe. One who can identify existing and predictable hazards in the working environment or working conditions that are dangerous to personnel and who has authorization to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. The competent person must have training and experience equivalent to or be under the supervision of a qualified rigger as defined in Appendix Q. Defective rigging shall be removed from service. Personnel qualifications. Each qualified rigger may have different credentials or experience. A qualified rigger is a person that has extensive knowledge training, and experience sufficient to calculate loads, load weights, safe capacities, and apply other safe rigging principles and procedures. Demonstrates the ability to utilize rigging materials and principles, and is capable of safely inspecting and performing rigging operations. Any worker engaged in the duties and performance of rigging shall be a qualified rigger. Employers must determine and designate in writing the qualified riggers and the specific rigging tasks for which they are qualified and provide to the GDA for acceptance. Note, the term rigger or qualified rigger in this manual refers to the function performed and in no way relates to the worker's job classification or position. Inspection and use. The use and maintenance of rigging equipment shall be in accordance with the rigging and equipment manufacturer. Rigging equipment shall not be loaded in excess of its working load limit. Rigging equipment, when not in use, shall be removed from the immediate work area and properly stored and maintained in a safe condition. General. When hoisting loads, a positive latching device shall be used to secure the load and the rigging. For example, self-closing or self-locking hooks, an alloy anchor type shackle with a bolt, nut, and retaining pin, screw pin shackle, etc. Custom fabricated grabs, hooks, clamps, or other lifting accessories, for example, equalizing beams, lifting or spreader beams, etc. For such units as modular panels, prefabricated structures, or similar materials shall be designed by a registered professional engineer marked to indicate the working load limit and shall be proof tested before initial use to 125% of their working load limit. Rigging gear shall be removed from the immediate work area when not in use. Furthermore, it shall be inspected, stored, and maintained in a safe condition. Multiple lift rigging or Christmas tree rigging. It is only allowed for the purpose of erecting or placing structural steel. The use of a multiple lift rigging assembly is considered a critical lift 
and requires a carefully detailed written critical lift plan. Multiple lift rigging assembly must be used with the following restrictions and requirements. A maximum of five members per lift. Only beams and similar structural members shall be lifted. All employees must be properly trained in all hazards and procedures and must be qualified riggers and signal persons. The crane manufacturer must allow multiple lift rigging. Only one load on each leg of the rigging. Capacities must be certified by the manufacturer or a qualified rigger and have a safety factor of 5 to 1. The total load shall not be exceeded. They must be rigged at least 7 feet apart. There are various types of slings available. Chain, wire rope, wire mesh, or synthetic web. When using rigging, edge protectors are required. These pictures illustrate various types of edge protectors used to protect a webbing type sling. Wire rope clip. Use only wire rope clips made from forged steel of a single saddle or U-bolt or a double saddle type clips. Do not use malleable cast iron clips with wire ropes utilized for hoisting. Refer to the clip manufacturer or qualified person for the spacing, number of clips, and torque values. The use section is in contact with the dead end of the rope. A common rule of thumb is never saddle a dead horse. This slide illustrates the two types of wire rope clips, the U-bolt clip and the double saddle wire rope clip. Wedge socket fastening. The unloaded, dead, or short end of the wire rope shall be looped back and secured to itself by a clip. Protruding ends of strands in splices on slings and bridles shall be covered or blunted. Alloy steel chain slings. Only alloy chain, grade 80 or higher, shall be used in rigging. Chain shall be visually inspected each day or shift when in use. Inspect chains on an individual link basis. Chains shall be cleaned before they are inspected as dirt and grease can hide nicks and cracks. Other changes in Section 15D02 address the inspection and removal criteria for alloy steel chain. This slide illustrates damage that can be observed in alloy steel chain slings. Cuts, chips, and gouges. Overload damage, typically the link stretches and the barrels will close up, rust and corrosion, or twisted links. Links twisted from knotting or placing a twist in the chain prior to the load stress. Impact damage or bent links, the link barrel has been bent from being wrapped around a load with sharp corners, or the link is bent from impact damage. The last one, heat damages and cracks. Alloy steel chain slings. This slide illustrates various end attachments used with alloy steel chain slings. Markings. Welded alloy steel chain slings shall have a fixed durable permanent identification stating size, grade, rated capacity, and sling manufacturer. The picture on the left indicates an alloy steel chain sling and the markings indicating its grade. The picture on the right illustrates a tag with the other additional required information. This slide illustrates examples of wire rope sling damage. 
kinking, bird caging, crushing, broken wires in the strands, and corrosion. Metal mesh slings. The following are examples of metal mesh sling damage. Broken weld or braze joint along the sling edge. Broken wire in any part of the mesh. Reduction in wire diameter of 25% due to abrasion or 15% due to corrosion. Lack of flexibility due to distortion of the mesh. Distortion of the choker fitting so that the depth of the slot is increased by more than 10%. Distortion of either end fitting so the width of the eye opening is decreased by more than 10%. The following are additional examples of metal mesh sling damage. A 15% reduction of the original cross-sectional area of the metal at any point around the hook opening of the end fitting. Excessive pitting or corrosion of fittings, broken or cracked fittings, distortion of either end fitting out of its plane, a sling in which the spirals are locked or without free articulation, other damage that causes doubt as to the strength of the sling. Synthetic fiber rope slings. Markings for synthetic rope and webbing and wire rope used for lashing shall identify the spool, master reel, or lot from which taken and shall indicate the rated load and reinspection due date. It is entered on a dog tag and zip tied to the sling and not threaded through the fibers of the sling. Synthetic web slings. Markings. The tag to identify the name or trademark of the manufacturer Rated capacity for the type of hitch, not to exceed rated capacity. Rigging hardware. Rigging hardware should not be painted once purchased. While the painting of rigging gear for identification is common, USACE considers this an unacceptable practice and constitutes a dangerous condition. Painting of hardware can potentially cover defects, creating a potentially unsafe condition. Drums, sheaves, and pulleys shall be smooth and free of surface defects that may damage rigging. All shackles must be manufactured according to ASME B30.26, and it must be ensured that both the entire body of the shackle and the pin are compliant with B30.26. Hooks. Hooks that have been opened more than 5% of the normal throat opening or twisted more than 10% from the plane of the unbent hook are considered defective. OSHA and ANSI allow 15% increase in throat opening of hooks. However, most manufacturers recommend that hooks be removed from service if any significant deformation exists. Hooks are not to be used for dragging equipment out of the mud. This action has the potential and, as our accidents would indicate, is side-loading our crane. All eye bolts, eye nuts, swivel hoist rings, and turnbuckles shall be manufactured according to ASME B30.26. Each turnbuckle, eye nut, and eye bolt shall be marked with name or trademark of the manufacturer, country is not acceptable, size or working load limit, and grade for alloy eye bolts. In addition, each swivel hoist ring must also be marked to show torque value, excluding trench cover hoist rings. Markings shall remain legible. This picture indicates various examples of eye bolts, eye nuts, swivel hoist rings, and turnbuckles that can be commonly found. Sheaves shall be compatible with the size of the rope used as specified by the manufacturer, inspected to ensure they are of correct size, properly aligned, lubricated, and in good condition, equipped with cable keepers when the rope is subject to riding or jumping off of the sheave. 